uh, shape the narrative from that Helsinki summit. But Wolf, extraordinary comments tonight from the top spy chief, Dan Coats, as you said. And on that second summit, he was told about it on stage in Aspen at a security forum. Before that, he said he knew nothing about it. The U.S. intelligence chief saying tonight he had to correct President Trump's incorrect claim Russia had no role in attacking American democracy. It was important to take that stand on behalf of the intelligence community and on behalf of the American people. Dan Coats, the president's hand-picked director of national intelligence, said American leaders must speak forcefully about Russia's ongoing threat to U.S. elections. It's undeniable that the Russians are taking the lead on this. Uh, basically, they are the ones that are trying to undermine our basic values, uh, divide us uh, with our uh, allies. They are the ones that are trying to wreak havoc over our election process. We need to call them out on that. It's critical that we do so. At a security forum in Aspen, Coates also said it was a mistake for Trump to meet privately with Vladimir Putin. If he had asked me uh, how that ought to uh, be conducted, I would have suggested a different way, but that's not my role. The extraordinary comments came as Trump invited Putin to the White House for a second meeting amid another major reversal from the Helsinki summit. Trump now saying he disagrees with Putin's request for the Russian government to interrogate Americans. He changed his tune after a loud bipartisan backlash, including a stinging rebuke from the Senate, only three days after he praised Putin's idea at the Helsinki summit. What he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. Okay? What the president twice called incredible on Monday was still being considered yesterday at the White House. The president's going to meet with his team and uh, we'll let you know when we have an announcement on that. Even as the State Department rejected the idea. Is that the overall assertions that have come out of the Russian government are absolutely absurd. The fact that they want to question 11 American citizens. For the third straight day, the West Wing scrambled to clean up, clarify and correct contradicting aspects of the Trump-Putin summit. The White House pulled the plug on allowing Moscow to question certain Americans, including Michael McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, and American-born financier Bill Browder, who lobbied the U.S. government to impose new sanctions. Speaking to CNN's Kate Baldwin, Browder said Putin wants to kill him. I, I, I've told people for a long time that I believe that I'm Putin's number one foreign enemy, and, and sometimes people have scoffed at that. <clears throat> but I think the fact that Putin brought it up um, pretty much validates my assertion. In announcing the reversal, Sanders said, it is a proposal that was made in sincerity by President Putin, but President Trump disagrees with it. The about face came shortly before the Senate unanimously voiced its opposition, voting 98 to 0 on a resolution to send the White House a message. That is neither the policy nor the practice of the United States to submit our citizens, let alone our ambassadors, to the interrogation of a foreign adversary. The president taking no responsibility for the diplomatic debacle the summit has become, instead placing blame on a familiar target. The fake news media wants so badly to see a major confrontation with Russia, even a confrontation that could lead to war, he said on Twitter. They are pushing so recklessly hard and hate the fact that I'll probably have a good relationship with Putin. In Moscow today, Putin was singing a strikingly similar tune. We see that there are forces in the United States that are prepared to casually sacrifice Russia-U.S. relations, to sacrifice them for their ambitions in the course of an internal political battle. Time magazine making the point on its cover, showing the faces of the two leaders morphing into one. Now, Wolf, as for that private one-on-one -on -one meeting between the two presidents earlier this week, U.S. officials say they still do not have a good sense of what they talked about for more than two hours. The intelligence uh, chief, again, Dan Coates, saying he does not know exactly uh, what the discussion was, and if he was to advise the president, he wouldn't have done it. Wolf, also extraordinary this evening uh, when he was asked if uh, he has any plans to resign. This was his answer to Andrea Mitchell, who was leading the moderation there. He said this, so long as I have the ability to seek the truth and speak the truth, I'm on board. But Wolf, that, of course, will be up to the president. I cannot recall a top advisor like this speaking so bluntly and honestly and frankly uh, you know, during his time in office. We'll see what the president, of course, has to say to this, Wolf, but many moving developments amid yet another day 
of cleanup. Yeah, it's hard to believe that well, the uh, director of national intelligence still, three days later, doesn't know what was discussed in that two-hour and ten-minute meeting between uh, President Trump and Putin. Uh, Jeff Zeleny at the White House, thanks very much. Uh, even as the White House scurry to clean up uh, President Trump's apparent embrace of Putin's offer to interrogate Americans, including a former U.S. ambassador to Russia, the Senate voted 98 to nothing to reject that proposal. Let's go to our senior congressional correspondent, Manu Raju. Manu, a lot of outrage up on Capitol Hill over this and so many other related issues. Yeah, no question about it, Wolf. Criticism has been building all week long after the president's summit with Vladimir Putin this week. Uh, Republicans and Democrats joining in the, the chorus of criticism about the president's comments and as well as the White House keeping open that option yesterday of allowing Americans to be questioned by Russians. Now, uh, when I had a chance to ask members of Congress about this, they pushed back very strongly, foreshadowing that 98 to nothing vote that occurred on the floor of the Senate today, expressing the Senate's opposition to any idea like this, this coming just just moments after the White House reversed course and said that they no longer were open to that idea. Now, when I asked Senator Lindsey Graham about this idea, this is what he said. Naive and absurd. Uh, there is no rule of law in Russia. There's the rule of Putin. The courts are not independent. The intelligence services are there for one purpose, to keep, in, keep him in power. I can't imagine a scenario where it would be on our national interest to allow Russia to have access to our intelligence community or people defending our nation. Are you concerned that the president may have agreed to a whole host of issues that you don't know about in this private meeting? Well, we're not, we're not Russia. Uh, we have, uh, as I said a moment ago, three co-equal branches of government. And so there are limitations to what even the executive can, branch can do without Congress, and I think uh, you're going to see a variety of different views. But um, I'm not worried about what the conversations the president had in private with Putin. I'm worried about what the actions are going to be. Now, Republicans did provide a little bit of cover for the White House. There were two efforts, one by, Demo by independent Senator Bernie Sanders, one bipartisan effort to issue a resolution to have the Senate approve a non-binding resolution expressing its concerns about what exactly happened uh, in Russia, calling for the full implementation of sanctions that have not been fully implemented yet. Also, uh, the Sanders plan calling for uh, the president to cooperate with the Mueller probe. Republicans blocked those two non-binding measures from going forward not allowing uh, the Senate to pass that. And also, Wolf, the Republicans uh, are opposing the idea demanded by Democrats to call for that translator who was at the Putin-Trump meeting to actually testify in Capitol Hill or turn over the notes to uh, lawmakers. They say that's a precedent they don't want to set, Wolf. Manu Raju up on Capitol Hill, thanks very much. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He's a member of both the Intelligence and Judiciary Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Of course, thanks. Actually, Wolf. you just heard our reporting, Dan Coates, uh, apparently, uh, he says, it's not apparently, he says he didn't even know about this second summit that the president has now planned with Putin in the fall over at the White House. Didn't know about it until a reporter asked him about it. What does that say to you that the director of national intelligence has to learn about a second summit in the works now with Putin from the news media? Well, it tells me we are more at risk at this uh, upcoming midterm election than we were even before because our leader, the president, is not on the same page with the person tasked with uh, protecting us. You know, Russia attacked our democracy this past election. When your home is burglarized, you don't invite the burglar over to dinner. You put in a home security system. We should not be inviting President Putin to dinner at the White House, to have a, a visit at the White House, especially during the season of our midterm elections. Uh, but it's really, Wolf, I, I think incumbent, as Senator Cornyn said, we're not helpless. We have uh, a Congress that could stand up to this president. Today in the House Intelligence Committee, we had an open hearing. We rarely have open hearings. And Ranking Member Schiff and I made a motion to bring the translator in, uh, to subpoena the translator to a closed session, to test these Republicans on the committee. Many of them had made uh, statements or tweets of concern about what the, the president had done, to see if they're really sincere about that. They voted that down along party lines. And so uh, we just have to keep testing them to see what they're willing to do to protect our country. The House Intelligence Committee is, is real acrimonious right now along party lines. And that's not uh, normally it, the case. If it were, I know, if it weren't uh, shocking enough that uh, he has to learn about a second summit from the news media, Dan Coates, maybe even more shocking that three days after 
the first summit, that two hour and 10 minute meeting between Presidents Putin and, and Trump, he doesn't know really what happened in that meeting. And that's why it's so important to hear from the translator, which I acknowledge is an extraordinary measure, which you wouldn't want to normally do. However, this president, to, to use a prosecutor's term, he has a prior. Last year, when Russians were in the Oval Office, he divulged national security secrets. We've, we're now learning that he even negotiated with Putin the possibility of turning over for interrogation a former U.S. ambassador. I think the American people, at least our intelligence committee, should know whether he divulged national security secrets, made any secret deals with Putin, and how this affects our security. Listen to how Dan Coats, the director of national intelligence, who was named by, by President Trump, listen to how he discussed uh, his, his not, you know, not knowing what happened in that first summit. I don't know what happened in that meeting. Um, uh, I think uh, as time goes by, and the president has already mentioned some things that happened in that meeting, I think we will learn more. But that is the president's prerogative. Um, uh, if he had asked me uh, how that ought to uh, be conducted, I would have suggested a different way. Uh, but that's not my role. That's not my job. So um, uh, it is what it is. He also said, and if that were not enough, uh, last year when the president met with Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, Ambassador Kislyak, the outgoing Russian ambassador here in Washington, uh, he didn't know about that meeting going into that meeting. And he said if he would have known, he would have thought it was a bad idea. He wouldn't have done it. I mean, he's the director of national intelligence. Uh, he's supposed to know about all this kind of stuff. That's right. And that's an honest Hoosier right there, what we saw with uh, Director Coates, thank God he's in that position. Uh, but the, the problem is, is if he does not have directives, if Christopher Wray does not have directives, if uh, Gina Haspel, the CIA, does not have directives to counter what the Russians are doing, you know, we're only uh, as safe as the Congress is willing to be by standing up to the president. Today, Wolf, on the House floor, again, nice tweets, nice statements I saw from my Republican colleagues. Republicans voted to completely zero out the election security grants that just last year were funded at $300 million. So we are going in totally vulnerable this November. If the director of national intelligence is out of the loop on some of these so sensitive national security related issues, where does that leave U.S. national security? Well, again, we're not helpless. So what we can do is start to require that, you know, the president turn over any conversations he's had with people like Putin to the national security. You need the Republican apparatus. majority in the House to be, go along with you I, on that. I hope they see that, you know, this is a five alarm fire right now and we need every fire hose and every hand on that hose to put it out. But we're so vulnerable if the president is off striking side deals and inviting the president to our country and everyone who's responsible for protecting us is out of the loop. Let me get your reaction to a truly shocking tweet earlier this morning from the president. Uh, uh, he tweeted this, and, and I'll put a little, little of it up on the screen. The summit with Russia was a great success, except with the real enemy of the people, the fake news media. So it's not Russia that's the real enemy of the American people. It's what he calls the fake news media that is the real enemy of the American people. Your reaction? Well, Wolf, uh, you know, the media is the only reason we've learned about so many of these side deals the president has struck with Russians, the fact that he had the Russians in the Oval Office and kicked out his own team and let Russian photographers photograph him. The media is the reason the American people know about concerning contacts the president and his team has had with Russia. So God bless uh, the free media. They asked tougher questions of Vladimir Putin uh, than the president did uh, when they were both uh, there in Helsinki. So uh, I'll stand with the media if I have to decide who's a bigger patriot. Congressman Swalwell, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Up next, there's more breaking news. President Trump moved